Hello and welcome. You are watching a technical training video in a series of videos about solar powered water system design presented by the West and Central Africa Regional Solar Hub. Let's get started. All right, we are now at our final video in our series of the five steps of solar powered water system design. This last video will focus on designing the photovoltaic or PV system. Now the goal in sizing your PV system is to ensure that the system produces enough water to meet the daily water demand during all months of the year. The chart on the right shows the volume of water produced in blue bars and the pump power to the pump in that red line on the y-axis and it shows how that changes throughout the day. So since the water produced and the power to the pump is based on solar energy, we know that as the sun rises, gets to its peak and sets, that we get a changing solar irradiance throughout the day. Therefore, it is critical to consider hourly water production, not just average flow rate, but what the flow rate will be at each hour of the day. Some risks of not doing this and not designing properly are undersizing the system in which you won't get enough water to meet the demand or oversizing in which you produce too much water and most likely spent too much money or at least more than you needed to. Now we also know that solar energy changes throughout the hour of the day, but solar energy also depends on your location in the world. And so it's essential to download specific irradiance and temperature data based on your project location. You can access global data from the Global Solar Atlas or the European Commission PVGIS. Both of the links are shown there. And we have a specific separate video which shows how to download and access this data. Once you have your latitude and longitude coordinates, um, you'll then download the irradiance and ambient temperature data for the specific worst month. This means the lowest average irradiance month of the year. And that's to ensure that you can produce water even during the worst conditions. You can then enter that information into the solar powered water system design tool. Next, you'll need to determine which solar panels you're using for your project. On most solar panels, you'll see a sticker on the back of the solar panels, or you can access the technical specifications for your solar panels on a manufacturer's website. You can then enter those details into the solar powered water system design tool. Once you've entered that, the solar powered water system design tool automatically calculates the power output of a single solar panel at the project location. It calculates from irradiance and ambient temperature, the cell temperature, the open circuit voltage, the short circuit current, the maximum power point current, the solar panel power output, and the maximum power point voltage of the panel. So all of these are automatically calculated just based on your inputs of irradiance ambient temperature, and the solar panel specifications. Now let's take a look at how this information looks in the solar powered water system design tool. For step five, we're going to be designing the PV system. And the first part is to account for the location. To do this, we need to know the specific project location coordinates. And once we've gotten these, we can then enter that information into the Global Solar Atlas or PVGIS to get specific project information such as the lowest radiance month or the average monthly, uh, average hourly irradiance and ambient temperature information. And as a reminder, we have a separate video linked below where you can see step-by-step -step instructions for how to download that information from PVGIS. In this case, we've already done the work to download the information and we've determined that the worst month for this specific location was December. And we choose this worst month condition to ensure that there is enough water even during the lowest radiance month of the year. Then we also have 
the radiance and ambient temperature data for each hour of the day from 6 a.m. until 7 p.m. for both radiance and ambient temperature data. Then we would enter the panel specifications, either from looking at the sticker on the back of the solar panel that you have available for this project, or by looking on the manufacturer's website to get technical specifications at standard test conditions for your solar panels. Now, once you've entered that, you can see that the spreadsheet automatically calculates the power output of a single solar panel at this project location. Now that we've determined the power output from a single solar panel at this project location, we can ask the question, how do we estimate the number of panels needed? We remember that we chose to use eight hours per day of solar pumping as an approximation of what we could expect. But if you were in a different location, you might have fewer hours or more hours, depending on the number of peak hours of sunlight that you had for uh, your project location. The chart on the bottom left shows P max in watts as it varies throughout each hour of the day. And then the chart in the middle shows a radiance and Pmax and the actual values for those throughout each hour of the day. These red squares highlight those peak eight hours. What we'll then do is find the minimum solar pumping power within those eight hours. In this case, the lowest value of Pmax within that highlighted square is 121.9 watts. Then We'll take that power, um, which is, um, we'll take the total power required by the pump and divide it by Pmax at 9 a.m., the circle, which is circled in green. And that gives us the estimated number of panels. So for this example, the power required by the pump, which was determined by looking at the pump curve in step four, is 1,100 watts. And we, when we divide 1,100 watts by 121.9 watts, we get approximately nine panels. But then we might ask the question, how many panels should we put in series? And how many panels should we put in parallel? Remember that wiring panels in series will increase the voltage, while wiring, wiring panels in parallel will increase the current or the amps. Panels are typically wired in series first to maximize the power with the least number of solar panels. When determining the number of panels in series, it is recommended to first maximize the volts without risk of exceeding the pump's maximum allowable voltage, which was 300 volts, and then to optimize amps to meet the power requirements of 1100 watts which is necessary for fulfilling the daily water demand. Note, we should keep in mind the pump's maximum current draw is 8.4 amps. Let's look at how this appears in the solar powered water system design tool. So within the design tool at step 5B, we have to consider the solar array configuration, which refers to the number of panels in series and then the number of parallel strings that we'll use in our solar array. Our estimation told us that we would need about nine panels. So to start, we'll try using nine panels in series and then one parallel string. We also need to enter a derating factor, which is typically between 0.85 and 0.9 for systems without an inverter. So it's up to you to decide what this derating factor should be. And that's dependent on how much loss will be experienced in the system due to things like shading of solar panels, the age of the solar panels, various factors that contribute to losses in the system. So using nine panels in series, we can see right at the beginning that our array VOC is higher than 300, which is our pumps P, uh, maximum voltage that we could see for the pump. So because of that, we need to reduce the number of panels in series because reducing the number of panels in series will also reduce our voltage. However, when changing to eight panels in series, 
we can see that for still a few hours in the morning, our array VOC exceeds 300. So still eight is a bit too high. So we can try reducing it to seven solar panels, and then we can see our array VOC is less than 300. Then the tool automatically calculates our array VMPP, our array IMPP, which is our current, and then our Pmax, which is our array IMPP multiplied by the VMPP. And that's automatically calculated as well. However, we can see that there's this column here for the adjusted IMPP in amps. And we need to adjust the amps because our pump has a maximum current rating of 8.4 amps, where it can only draw 8.4 amps. So to do this, we'll need to enter an equation where we reference the array IMPP by clicking on entering an equal sign and then clicking on that cell and hitting enter. Once we've done that, we can drag this down through the entire column for each hour of the day. Now you'll notice there are two hours in the middle of the day where our IMPP exceeds the maximum pump current draw of 8.4. So for these cells, we can just type 8.4 and that addresses the adjusted IMPP. Then the tool automatically calculates our Pmax by multiplying our VMPP by our adjusted IMPP. And finally, we get an adjusted PD rated, which multiplies our Pmax by our D rating factor of 0 0.9. So now that we've gotten our power output from our solar array, we can ask the question, how do we determine daily water production? To do this, we'll use the selected 16 SQF10 pump curve. From our table showing our adjusted P D rated value in watts, we'll look at this maybe particular value at 9 a.m. of 768 watts, find that value on the x-axis of our pump curve We'll then read up to where it intersects with the TDH and then read across to the flow rate on the y-axis. In this case, it's 2.0 meters cubed per hour. So this tells us that at about uh, at 9 o'clock, the flow rate will be about 2 cubic meters per hour during the worst month of the year at this specific project location. We can then repeat the process for the remaining hours of the day and all that gives us a total table that's filled in for each adjusted PD rated um, power. Um, we'll have an approximate flow rate at a TDH of 54.5 cubic meters per hour. And all of that adds together to give us a total daily water production of 27.1 cubic meters per hour. Now the final question is to ask, does this total daily water production exceed or meet our design demand flow rate? And when we check, we see that 27.1 is greater than 25.2 cubic meters per day, which is our design flow rate. In the event that uh, this did not meet our daily water demand, it would just be an iterative process of trying different PV system arrangements of solar panels in series and parallel in order to finally get enough water production to meet daily water demand. So once you've done that, you've completed the design for your solar powered water system. Thank you for watching this quick technical training video about solar powered water system design presented by the West and Central Africa Regional Solar Hub. If you want to learn more or get assistance with the project you're working on, visit our website at wcarsolarhub.org. Thanks for watching.